How does that feel on your legs, Adam? This is so cool. So that thing he's wearing is going to tell you what's wrong with his legs? It's a robotic diagnostic exoskeleton. Once we power it up, it'll support and guide Evan's legs, enabling him to walk. While he does, it'll measure and analyze the biomechanics in his legs. It'll help us pinpoint Evan's problem that's in the muscle or the nerves. So Angie will control everything remotely. You just relax and let the robotic legs do the walking for you, okay? The stimulator's still powering up. It's not online yet. Then who is he walking? I don't know, but it's not me. He's walking on his own. Mrs. Coleman, when Evan walked earlier, we hadn't yet turned on the stimulator. No crutches, no support. He walked on his own. Perfectly. There are no physiological problems with Evan's legs. Okay, so just say what you're saying. We believe that Evan's paralysis is psychosomatic in origin. Neurological symptoms can physically impact the body in very profound ways. If it's all in his head, how do we fix it? It's usually accomplished through counseling. Behavior therapy has the best results. So you want him to see a shrink? That's your big pioneering approach? What you're saying is there's really no way you can help our son. We're not saying that. We just need more time. Of course they do. Any ideas? Seems like conversion disorder. So the brain has deactivated the neural impulses in his legs. Patients are incapable of overriding it, even when they're told there's nothing physically wrong with them. And there are cases of people going blind with fully functional optic nerves. So wouldn't that indicate that Evan's got some undiagnosed trauma in his past? Yeah, that's what worries me. Usually it's sexual or physical abuse. And until we identify what it is, we can't treat it, let alone get him walking again. Please, you don't need these. You can walk on your own. You gotta dig deep, son. I, I can't walk without my crutches. Honey, no, I'm sick of Honey, this please. Mr. Coleman, please. I can't do it, Dad. Yes, you can. Jim, please calm down. We've been going about this all the wrong way, Cindy. He doesn't need any damn doctors. He needs family. We can fix this ourselves. Mr. Coleman, we understand how. I am not faking this, Dad. I swear. Tell him what you told me. That it's all in his head. That there's nothing that wrong is with not it. That's not what we said at all, Mr. Coleman. Please, let's just step outside, okay? Just walk for me, okay? Do it now. You did it before. Just do it again. Come on. Jim, stop it! Let's go. We have to ask you, um, has your husband shown any abusive behavior toward your son? What are you talking about? We noticed in the room before when he wanted Evan to walk, he, he seemed very passionate. Yes, he is passionate. What are you saying? We think it's possible that the source of Evan's leg issues could be from a past trauma. We observed that your husband was pretty upset before, and we were wondering if maybe this was a pattern of behavior. No. No. Jim is a good man. He would never lay a hand on Evan. Ever. I swear to you. Okay. Yeah, no, you understand why we have to ask these questions. Of course. It's just, Jim isn't. He's a simple man. He was raised on a farm. He just wasn't built for everything he's had to go through with his children. Children? Evan was registered as an only child. We had a... Evan had a brother. We didn't know. I don't think any of us has really been the same since... Derek. His name was Derek. She used to play with your brother Derek? Mom told us about him. We, um... We never talk about him. Yeah. It must be really hard. I mean, probably really painful to think about it. So that's what this is really about? You know, my therapist tried to pull the same move. You, you form a bond no, with the Evan, subject and then you get him comfortable to talk, right? I'm not faking this. I No, I don't think you are. Evan, your brother's death was a tragic accident. I don't, I don't want to talk about but this. But it was just that. It was an accident. It has nothing to do with you my legs. You were 10 years old. You weren't responsible. Well, how, do you, how do you know that? Were you there? No, I wasn't. Why don't you tell me what it was like? It's over. You were downstairs. Derek was upstairs. I said I don't want to talk about smoke. it. You smelled smoke. Please don't. Evan, look at me. Yeah. It was not your fault. Yes, it was. 
As soon as I smelled that smoke, I ran. Like a coward. I could have saved her. He's using my brother and I could have saved him. Virtual reality therapy. The military developed it to treat combat survivors suffering from extreme PTSD. Soldiers are put through VR battle simulations to help speed up therapeutic recovery times. So you want to take Evan back to the day he broke his leg? No, not exactly. Mr. and Mrs. Coleman, we believe the trauma that caused Evan's conversion disorder was his brother's death and Evan's a belief that he is responsible. What? That happened years before his accident. And Evan lost the use of his legs when he was 13. That was the same age that Derek was when he died. We believe this treatment is our best hope to break the cycle of guilt that's destroying his body. You want to put him through that again? That horrible night? We lost a piece of our family that we'll never get back, ever. We're not putting him through that again. We're not putting ourselves through it again. Jim, we don't talk about Derek. We never have. If we do this, if we put him through that night again, what happens? Are you saying that you believe he'll walk again? Well, we don't know what will happen, but yes, that would be our hope. We told you that we would find the cause of his paralysis. Now let us help him walk. This is a virtual reality headset. What you'll see is gonna look very real. You still okay with that? Yeah, I'm actually a lot less nervous than I thought I'd be. And what's the propranolol working? It reduces your stress, and the decyclosarine will enhance your memory. So I'll control your environment from here. As you remember more details, tell them to me and I'll add them to the environment. Remember, you can stop at any time. Okay. Mom, Dad, you okay? Oh my God, I'm home. Oh my God. It looks exactly like our old house. The home videos and pictures you provided us with allows me to create a fully immersive 3D environment. Evan, where were you the night of the fire? Downstairs, getting ice cream. Derek was in his room, we were playing video games together. Okay, think back to that day the best you can. Is this what the downstairs looked like? Smoke. There was smoke. I guess. More. A and uh, I could tell it was coming from upstairs. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, like that. Exactly. Like that. Evan, what'd you do next? Scared. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta run away. I can't breathe. Oh my god, I can't watch this. Wait. I didn't leave. I, w I went up, up the stairs. Derek was upstairs. Evan, we're gonna take you upstairs now, okay? Okay. Tell me what it was like. Smoke, uh, lots of smoke, flames, lots of, lots of flames. Where are the flames? Flames coming from the end of the hall. They were coming from above. I, I could see Derek's room. Derek? Derek! There was, there was, there was, there was something else. Something strange. Stars. The ceiling was crumbling. A beam fell. Blocked the way. The door was blocked. I couldn't get there to help him. Oh my God. It wasn't my fault. Of course it wasn't. We know. We know. It wasn't my fault.